To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that are shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. Welcome, fathers, mothers, grandfathers, grandmothers. Uh, welcome to The World Needs a Father, uh, Chapter 10. It's on restoring damage. We born in weakness, not in strength. Restoring damage. Actually, it's all about saying, I'm so sorry. Have you actually realized that uh, what area you have actually done wrong? What area you have not doing at all? Or what could be doing better? This is something I always ask myself. And also something that I also would like to ask my family. In my household, on Sunday, we actually have this uh, uh, session where we actually talk to one another. And I actually reflect on what I've actually done wrong and ask for apologies. What I've not done at all, maybe I ask my children, or what could I have actually done better? And it's actually on Sunday. So on Sunday, we come and worship God together. And we want to born in weakness, not in strength. And also, how many times have you actually asked for forgiveness from your child, your children, or your spouse, your wife, for the things you did wrong? And what are some of the things maybe you still need to ask forgiveness for? It's actually something that's really very good because it really frees us to actually love one another and serve one another. Your children and your wife is a mirror of who you are. And if they are happy, you are also happy. And it improves a relationship and also restore uh, damage. So how do we restore the damage of the past? Again, the main theme is about bonding in weakness, not in strength. Number one, we need to stop the blame game. A lot of times when we justify ourselves, you know, it's the opposite of moving forward in weakness. A lot of times, we, if we don't own our failures, we cannot correct them. So a wrong reaction to transgression is just as bad. So second thing is we need to stop playing the shame game. Self-pity is actually something that's very disruptive. It enslaves and not liberates. Playing the victim doesn't really set us free or serve anyone at all. We feel victimized and we feel weak. To own the problem, we actually need to step towards the solution, not towards self-pity spa. So how can we actually heal from these inner wounds that we have and to be free and to be joyful? Number one, we need to own the problem. Number two, we need to ask for forgiveness and also forgive the person. Do not blame the person or shame the person. Number three, we need to walk in inner victory and actually invite them to walk in inner victory with us and then walk together by making amendments and making uh, moving forward together as a family. So we need to, number one, own the problem. Have we actually identified what is the wound, something that you may have actually realized you have actually caused wound, you cause people to feel tear or feel scared to actually talk about to you. We want to know where it came from and why it caused so much pain. Sometimes we need to ask the person to understand the damage that we have actually caused in our lives. We also need to acknowledge that we make a mistake and then we want to ask for forgiveness. And actually asking, asking for forgiveness, you know, it's always about coming together and hugging each other. My youngest daughter always uh, point mommy and say, mommy, give daddy a hug. <laughs> After I ask for good forgiveness. So I think really it's about really naming the wound, how we have been wounded. You know, really sometimes saying daddy has actually done this. I'm so sorry I, I make you feel this way. Daddy has actually neglected to do this. I'm so sorry. You know, uh, can you help me? Can you forgive me? So it's asking for forgiveness. So in asking for forgiveness, it's really also about forgiving the person. We apply and we hear the forgiveness for ourselves. You know, our children really love us. The children actually so openly forgive us. And we plead the blood of uh, Jesus Christ to cover all this general uh, generation sins and heal it. You know, I, there was once uh, when I was much younger, I was driving one day 
you know, and my twins are actually sitting behind in the car and they were talking and talking and talking. And after I parked the car, I was uh, waiting to go down, but they're still talking. So what I did was I actually left the car and they were so absorbed. The, my, my daughter is so absorbed. They were just talking that they actually uh, suddenly realized, hey, daddy is not in the car anymore. And they're left all alone. And she they started crying. And actually, I felt sad about it. You know, I thought they were traumatized because they couldn't find me. They were actually around just uh, five years old at that time, just talking, talking, talking. So it has really weighed on me for so many years, you know, that uh, I just left them in the car because I was just so angry. They were talking, talking when I need to drive, you know. And uh, you know what? When I actually ask them and say, Daddy, I'm so sorry, I make you all cry, you know, by leaving you alone, you know. Daddy actually love you. He said, no, 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 daddy, daddy, we love you also, we forgive you. So it's so good to be forgiven and to be free from that, uh, that time that you think you have done something wrong. Okay, and that makes a relationship closer and we can learn to love one another and serve one another. So it's really applying forgiveness so we receive forgiveness. So the next thing is to really allow God to actually have the right to make us happy or sad. You know, it's, it's interesting, even though we ask for forgiveness, but we also want to release that forgiveness to other people. We are sad that uh, God has chosen us children, uh, our parents, and also given us children, you know, and he's actually prepared us to actually be the best father for them, to be the best mother for them, you know. So we can, uh, in fact, we are all God's children because once we were in darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. So we need to live as children of light. And this is actually the, a uh, period where uh, we're waiting for Jesus to come and he's the light of the world and he has actually indeed come into our life. So we need to decide all the, capture all the thoughts and make them obedient to Jesus Christ. And we need to change the negative thoughts into positive thoughts as in 2 Corinthians 10.5. And what is it like actually to, to walk in inner victory? Really knowing our Abba Father and receiving that forgiveness and also being able to forgive other people and also receive forgiveness. It's really about a feeling and a lie and that conviction. You know, we need to exchange it for the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is that Jesus Christ has actually died for us on the cross. And by the cross, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are actually forgiven. And then we can act on that truth. We can really act on that truth. The feelings are actually set free. The wrong thing has been actually amended for and forgiven because we've asked for forgiveness and people say, I'm so sorry. And we find actions then connect to our new patterns of thought and practice. And we need to practice them until they become a habit. So this is something I actually ask my children to actually help me. You know, sometimes I may be uh, some quite moody at times. You know, my younger one, hey, daddy, daddy, how could I help you? You know, and together we know this is a journey of repeated and repetitive healing uh, episodes. Likewise, when my children sometimes don't do their housework, you know, or don't do their homework, and uh, my uh, wife needs to nag at them, yeah, we know that uh, sometimes we say, hey, let's just do, do it so mommy wouldn't nag at you so much. So a lot of times they say, so sorry, mommy, uh, we won't do this next time. Okay, <laughs> we are forgiven. So we ask for the control of the Holy Spirit over our lives so that the flesh can be overcome every day. And I think it's, as a family, we can say, I'm so sorry. You know, if you happen to have children who are not so forgiving, they may be brooding and all that, maybe you can choose to write a letter to them. Find an appropriate time, you know, uh, going for a meal together, going for coffee together, right? Where you can have alone time with them to ask for forgiveness. So we need to identify this behavior and thought in ourselves that inhibit our own growth and our freedom to walk with God. And we work actively to change that with the support of our family members, you know, a mentor or accountability partner. So many people then don't experience total restoration because they are actually alone. So in this uh, chapter on restoring damage, it's really about coming back to your family to your children, your son, your daughter, your wife, and actually coming together to heal together. And actually as a process of discipleship, which means we are practicing Jesus together, it helps in spiritual growth, both for themselves and also for ourselves, maturity. So together, 
We are actually a family of forgiven and forgiving children of light. And this is a daily walk together into inner victory. Uh, so again, Sunday is a time that we come to church. And Sunday, sometimes we take the communion together. You know, this is the body that's broken for us, the Lord Jesus said. And this is the blood that's shed for us. And he washed the disciples' feet. And that's a very good time when we come to the Lord's table to wash each other's feet, to ask for forgiveness and to walk together as a loving family. So again, in this time, we need to fight against any pride or self-pity and ask someone to keep us accountable. In this case, it's actually our family, our children. You know, it could be a daughter, a son, in something, I may have a temper issue, I may have a mood issue, or I may procrastinate and not do something. And I think we need to set our mind to heal this and ask the Holy Spirit and ask our uh, children to hold us accountable and also bring healing to them by being uh, more happy together and spending family time in healthy uh, relationship right, together. Likewise, also with older men as mentors, they could actually model uh, fatherhood uh, for us. And we can become the father that we have never been, been because we are walk, walking together. Likewise, we can life coach other fathers in authentic uh, fatherhood. And we can arrange uh, cycling together. We can arrange uh, going to uh, fishing together. Yeah, so families can come together and then have happy time together. So uh, this is actually about uh, restoring damage and healing from the inner wounds for our children and also for ourselves. Number one, we need to own the problem and be very specific. What are we sorry for? And then ask for the forgiveness. Uh, we also forgive the person. We then together, work together to love one another and serve one another. And this inner victory that we receive from Jesus Christ and then walk together, spend meaningful family time together on Sundays, especially weekends, weekdays, uh, especially weekdays, have meals together if possible every day, have dinner together serve one another and maybe it's a chance to say sorry also and ask about the day. So this is about restoring damage, bonding in weakness, not in strength. And it's when we can say that we are sorry that we can find restoration. So what have you realized that maybe you have been doing wrong that you would like to ask for forgiveness to say, I'm sorry, or you did not do anything at all. Maybe your children will tell you, or could you, you have done better? Would you receive that? and ask them. Question two, how many times have you actually asked for forgiveness from your children or your spouse for things you actually done wrong the last one week? You know, when was the last time you actually did that? Question three, what are some of the things you still need to ask for forgiveness for? Would you actually think about it? And how could you create that space, right? Maybe together with that person, it could be over a meal, over coffee or whatever uh, is suitable for you and then ask for that forgiveness. And I wish you all the best, for this is the world needs a father. We can all restore the damage that we have actually done and born in weakness, not in strength. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.